Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today we'll be modeling this cartoony, pixary, sausage finger hand. This is part one of this hand series, the next part will be about rigging and modeling, and the third part will be a quick one about UV unwrapping it. If you want to support me and this channel, you can go on my Gumroad, link in the description, and you can buy these models. I'll have three different packs, one with the model unrigged in 12 different poses, one with the model unrigged in 12 different poses, including the cartoon skin texture pack, and one with the model rigged, ready for animation, with 14 rigged poses including individual finger and wrist control and including the cartoon skin texture pack all packs will have the models uv map and they'll include both right and left hand so if you feel like you need it go buy it it's a huge help for me so thank you now here are two side notes number one this is how i model this hand uh, i'm far from an amazing modeler and there's plenty of people who do this way better than me but the model looks good and has a good topography so i thought it would be good to share two i'll be repeating the same moves and the same tools across this whole tutorial so many things will be highly sped up here and there i'll mention the tools that i'm using but you can always slow down and pause the video to see the shortcuts that i'm pressing follow me on instagram at ojang comment share subscribe hit the bell all that youtube stuff you know it let's go so I start with uh, sketching out what I want. So I sketch out the hands in different poses. Then once I figure it out, I draw the front and the side view. And then I just take a photo with my iPhone, send it to my computer, and then I can use it as reference. So once we open a new project, we're going to hit that little button there. And then we have all these right view and front view orthographic angles. So we're going to click on the right view window and shift V. Click on the back tab, click on those three dots and import the right view of our model. I'm going to zoom out and it's really big. If we add a 10 by 10 cube, you can kind of see that it's uh, the reference is way too big. So we're going to hit shift V again and we're going to scale down the image until it's the right size that, that, that we want. So now we're going to hit on the front view, do the same thing, but add the front view um, reference image. And we want to align the top here. So we're just going to move the image until it hits the top of the cube. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. Now this reference is just general, I'm not going to be super attached to it, but it's just kind of like nice to have a little reference. So we're just going to delete the cube and add a plane, which is going to be the top of the finger. The plane is way too big, so we're going to set 10 by 10, and we're going to add two segments by two segments. So that's four segments overall. Let's hit NB to see the lines, and we're going to slightly reduce its height so it won't be a perfect square, because we want the finger shape to be more oval and not a perfect cylinder. Then we're going to select the points on the corners and scale them down a little bit so we kind of create this primitive circle. And then we're going to raise that middle vertex. And then we're going to select all the edges and control drag them down on the Y axis and scale them up using the right mouse button so that all the axis scale. And then we're going to do it again. And that's what I'm going to do a lot. I'm going to select and control drag to copy polygons and all that. And we're going to do it again going down the whole finger. And we're going to hit KL for the loop cut. And we're going to set a few loop cuts spread equally by clicking that plus button. Just going to scale it the way we want. And we're going to select the bottom, the bottom loop edge by hitting UL and selecting it. And then we're going to drag it and scale it a little bit. I'm going to move it a little forward so that the back is kind of um, aligned, right? We want a straight back of the finger. And now we're creating the base of the finger pretty much. Now I'm going to use the live selection tool, make sure that only select visible is checked off and select the bottom vertices so I can align them with the top ones and get a better edge flow, which is going to be a recurring thing. Now we're going to hit the L button or the, the enable axis movement. Then we're going to enable snap to vertex. We're going to drag our axis. And we lost it. So we're going to drag our axis until it snaps to the bottom point. And now we can drag, control drag the, the finger to create the pinky. We scale it down a little bit and scale both of them down. And we want them to be really, really close because once we subdivide them, the distance between them is going to increase.
And I'm going to select the two, two um, bottom side points, side vertices. And we're just going to scale them on the x-axis. So we kind of scale the, the, the bottom base a little bit inwards. I'm going to do the same thing for all of them. And again, just align the, the edges and the same thing with this guy. Now we're gonna combine all of our models together into one model. And as you can see, they're still a bit too far from my taste. I'm gonna bring them in even closer. So I'm, I'm selecting one polygon, hitting U, W to select all the connected ones and dragging them. looks pretty good so now what we need to do is we need to connect these points these this point and this point and the other one so that these edges are connected it's gonna straighten these edges on the side of the fingers and before we do that let's create another loop at the base we're gonna ul all the bottom loops and we're gonna drag control drag them down and then just scale each one individually just a little bit And now we're going to hit ME to get the polygon pen tool. Uh, make sure it's on draw mode points, it's, the auto weld is checked, and the reproject result is unchecked. And now we can just grab a point and drag it to another point, and it's going to snap and weld them together because auto weld is checked. So now it's just one point where there were two. And now all those models are welded together and I'm again kind of aligning the the edges so that the edge flow from the top to bottom will be straight and now we're going to do the same thing here we're going to weld these points together and in the back too Now we got all these loops. Great. Now we're going to select all the loops, uh, deselect the, the middle ones, and control drag them down on the Y axis again. Just align those back edges so that the back becomes more straight. We're going to get the select tool, make sure only select visible is unchecked. And we're going to select all the middle finger and drag it a little bit to the back because we want the middle finger to be a bit protruding to the back so the back won't be um, totally flat we want the back to have a little curve and we're going to select all the bottom loop again drag it and we're going to select these front edges and kind of drag them forward and now we're going to start slowly forming the palm. And we want to create the thumb now. So I'll hit UB to select the bottom poly loop of the finger and hit UF for fill selection and then shift click the polygons on top. And then I hit UP to duplicate that selection into its own layer. And that's going to be that bottom layer. I'm going to rotate it, align it roughly according to the sketch. And I want to rotate it a 45 degree angle so that this edge is parallel to the three fingers. And I'm going to create the base for the, for the thumb. Now that this base is going to be wider. And I'm just aligning the edges. And that's, that's a lot of what I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing a lot of selection, aligning, um, dragging edges to create more polygons. I'm combining vertices and edges with the polygon pen tool. And that way, basically, we form a good polygon flow, which is uh, probably the most important thing when you, when you model something like that that you want to rig. You always want to make sure that your polygons are aligned and that they're connected to each other in a way that's flowing right. And um, 
kind of having a hard time explaining what does that mean. But when you do it, you know it. And at the end, I'm going to show you what I mean. And again, I'm just selecting edges and starting to connect the thumb and the fingers and creating the palm. And because this is very low poly, um, every placement of a vertex or a polygon or an angle of a polygon really affects the topography. So I'm kind of carefully placing points and edges and polygon angles to, to form the subtle topography of the hand that I want. So the hand has like bumps at the at the base of the fingers and the 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 thumb base is very puffy compared to the center of the of the palm which is more curved in so these curves I'm I'm taking into consideration when I'm when I'm aligning and and moving around points and polygons especially once I um put it in a subdivision surface and that's going to be like all these rough angles are going to be rounded So now I'm selecting all these bottom edges and I want to um, align that with the base of the thumb. And now I want all these points to be aligned on their Y axis. This is the Y axis. I'm going to put it at minus 16 centimeters and select all of them. Hit MU and then I can set a point value on the Y axis. So I'm selecting set and then I can input minus 16. And now all of them are at minus 16 centimeter. Now the, the, the biggest work we've done, we, we created all the fingers and we made them connect in a healthy way. It's going to bend and deform in a, in a healthy way. It's not going to create any glitches or any distortions. And now it's just about creating that connection to the to the base of the of the wrist. I'm going to drag around these polygons to make the overall hand shape a bit round. As you can see from the top, I want it to be a bit more round and square. And I also want to round out this edge of the palm into the wrist. So I want to drag in the top points and drag out the bottom points so it creates like a slope and we're selecting the loop dragging it down and that janky edge we can get rid of by uh, adjusting the fong angle to let's say 90 which rounds out all the polygons that are connected at a lower than 90 degree angle And now I'm just selecting loops, selecting edges, and I'm adjusting them to, to kind of form the right shape. And now I want to space out these edges more equally. I'm just going to select an edge, hit MO, and now I can slide it across the, um, the polygon. And I'm doing the same thing with the points. I'm hitting MO in point mode and I'm sliding the points on an edge. Now I'm just shortening the thumb a little bit by selecting a edge loop, hitting MN. That's going to dissolve that edge loop and just dragging down the, all the polygons at the top. And I also want to round out the top of the fingers. I'm just going to create that slope from the top a bit more angled. So the top won't be um, flat. I also want to make the thumb a bit thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. So I'm going to select all the base polygons and just drag them outwards and scale them up a little bit only on the X and Z axis. I'm 
I'm just aligning all these points so the edge will flow in a nice way and not in a zigzaggy way. Now I want the top of the thumb to be a bit tapered in, so I'll use the move tool, select the top polygons at the top front, go to the soft selection tab and enable it. This allows me to move a polygon while gradually pulling the polygons surrounding it. And by adjusting the radius, I can control the fall off the selection. And this applies to points and edges. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm just gonna make all these tiny changes and you know, I just look at it and I'm judging with my eye if the topography is the way that I want it to be. And I keep enabling the sub subdivision surface to see if it rounds out in a nice way. Now I wanna make that pinky a bit thicker, a bit wider, I mean. I'm gonna select all these side polygons. Just drag it with soft selection to the side. And I'm doing it very subtly as I'm um, rotating around the model and uh, judging how it feels. Really all we have to left to do is um, to create the creases that happened on the knuckles on the inside of the fingers. So for that, what I can do is I can hit KL and then hit shift and that's going to snap the loop cut to the center of the polygon. And I'm going to do that for all of them around the thirds of the finger. And I'll also add a few subdivisions to the arm. And you can finish here, but I want to create these creases that happen on the inside of the fingers where the knuckles are or the on the opposite side of the knuckles so i'm gonna ul select those loops that we created and then i'm gonna unselect the two front ones and then i'm gonna hit mn to dissolve the others then i'm gonna take the polygon pen me and i'm gonna drag the points to the top point of each polygon so i'm creating these triangles and now as you can see once i hit the subdivision surface it creates these creases And I'm going to select each middle point. I'm just going to drag it in. And look at that. It just gives us these tiny knuckles. And I'm just going to select all the surrounding polygons, drag them in a little too. It's going to play with it. And you'll see that each movement gives you a slightly different crease. So that's kind of up to you, but that looks good to me. And that's it. All I'm doing now is I'm again revolving around it adjusting um, the topography on a very micro level and let me just round out this corner of the hand and let's adjust all these edges that looks good to me that looks really good it looks like it has a lot of character and the topography is is really good I'm just gonna select these top polygons of each finger and taper them in a little bit And I'm just going to select the, the bottom polygons of the fingers and drag them out a little bit. I just want the fingers to be a little thicker on the bottom and, and thinner at the top, but very slightly. And some more micro adjustments. Just going to scale down the arm to create this uh, slightly bumpier palm. And again, just going to make these side, um, these uh, the pinky and the index slightly wider. And after I finished, I noticed that the arm is still not round enough for my taste. So I went back and gradually pulled in the corners and pulled out the center of each side of the arm until the bottom view showed a pretty circular shape for the arm. And this is what I meant about a healthy polygon flow. When we select the loops, we can see that the flow of the polygons is healthy and predictable, consisting of mainly quads that are connected in a way that allows the model to be easily deformed without janky distortions and also easily UV unwrapped, which will be important for our next tutorial about how to rig and animate and how to UV unwrap this model.
And there you go. This is how it looks like. Uh, stay tuned for the next part where we rig it and animate it. And there's this really cool technique that's super easy to animate where you don't need to keep rotating each segment in order to animate. You just create these uh, set movements and then you can uh, work them every, anytime you want. So stay tuned. Go to my Gumroad. Get these models rigged, unrigged with the materials, all of them. And yeah, follow me on Instagram at Ojang. Comment, subscribe, share. I love you. Have a good day. Peace.